a division of Northern Elders Forum ensues as one side okays a secession of Igbos while the others criticize it. As INEC loses over 40 officers to attacks and arson, we wonder what could the cost of the 2023 elections be? This is Plus Politics and I am Mary Hanacom. Amid calls for secession and self-determination, the Northern Elders Forum has come out with a surprising statement. The NEF stated that in order to prevent another civil war in Nigeria, the Southeast should be allowed to secede from Nigeria if the movement is popular among the people in the region. The forum stated that standing in the way of the agitators will only worsen the insecurity in the country. And then, in a turn of events, the pan arawa social political organization under the aegis of Northern Elders Forum called on Igbo leaders to prevail on the members of the indigenous people of Biafra championing secession to sheath their swords to avoid instigating another civil war in Nigeria. Joining us to discuss this is Musa Idris, Chairman of the People Alliance Party, and Law Mefford, Director of Public Affairs, Igbo Leadership Foundation. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Thank, thank you for hosting us. All right, great. I'm going to start with you, um, Dr. Mefford, because um, we all, all know what's happening in the Southeast with the police stations being targeted, prisoners being released, um, electoral offices being burned down. Uh, it's, it's uh, you know, a potpourri of issues. But um, let's go to what Dr. Akim Baba said um, to um, the Southeastern leaders. He said that um, political leaders in the Southeast, I'm quoting him directly, appear to have submitted to violence and terror from IPOB and ESN and that muted voices of millions of Igbos cannot be heard so that Nigerians can understand the degree to which this secession movement um, is being made. Um, so my question is, have the Igbo leaders been muted or uh, are they not paying attention to what's happening? Have they been speaking on this issue? Or is it that the Igbo leaders have turned a deaf ear and you know, blind eyes to what's happening in the Southeast? Do you agree? with Dr. Uh, Akim Baba and what he said. Uh, I don't think uh, Akim Baba um, understands uh, the situation as it is and that the, as it should be. We have uh, an apex body in uh, Igbo social cultural life, and that is uh, Ohanes Ndibo worldwide as led by Professor Ambassador George Obioso, he has come out repeatedly with a statement that the Igbos do not support succession. But Igbos at the same time wouldn't want to be victims of Nigeria's unity. Let me put what he has said in perspective so we can understand him. He is saying that the Igbo want restructured Nigeria. It's as simple as that. And that is where over 80 percent of the people stand, including myself. I am a restructuralist. That is where Ndibu stand, restructured Nigeria. But I can also tell you that if Nigeria is not restructured, going forward, we don't see any future for the country. And um, it will serve everybody's uh, interest that the nation is restructured. By restructuring, I mean that Nigeria is restored to the federalism agreed upon with uh, the colonial Britain and Nigeria's uh, founding fathers. As it is today, we are running a unitary system of government in the place of federalism. The facts are very clear. And that is what has led to the problems we have because the regions or the zones, as they are presently called, are stifled. They are incapable 
of engaging in any meaningful economic activity. So the youth restiveness can only grow because uh, employment are not being created. The economy is not growing. Everybody can see that the economy is actually, is actually contracting. So if that is the truth and restructuring can cure it, then why don't we look at restructuring? Then to respond directly to Akin Baba, you see, if he says that uh, the evils can go if they want to go, uh, and uh, they, but there should be a test to be sure that it's a popular demand, I think that is fair enough. Even if, 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 um, the, if Nigerians want to know how the evils feel today, let me tell, let me predict what will happen. If you carry out referendum today, the way Nigeria is, it's not only the Southeast or the Eagles that would want to go. But the, virtually every part of the country would want to go because the country has configured, it's not working for anybody. So Akim Baba, to that extent, is right. But I want to correct one impression. For him to say that uh, the voices of uh, the elders of uh, the of Ndibo is muted, you know, or muffled or stifled, I think it's been economic with the truth. You see, we, you, the, the, the problem you have with IPOB and others, it has been uh, condemned roundedly. And uh, we do not want violence. Igbos are not violent people. We are not. The, the Biafra war was imposed upon us. We didn't declare war. The federal government under Gerard Yaku, Yaku well, Gowen be, I'm, started I'm sorry, the war. I'm, I'm sorry, Dr. Yes, Mefo. Let me just quickly come in there. Apologies for speaking over you. But um, as much as I do want to believe what you're saying, that the Igbos in general do not support the ESN or the IPOB, we are seeing a lot more people um, welcoming IPOB in the Southeast. It seems that more and more people are in support of them. But you're telling us right here on national TV that the Igbos are not for secession, but this is what the IPOB wants. And we can see, IPOB. And we can see more and more people um, applauding what they're doing. I understand, I understand your doing. question. Many more people will have to have sympathy for IPOB as we delay restructuring. The problem is because nothing is working for everybody. And this is not a feeling shared by the Southeast alone. The, the entire Southern Nigeria is saying the same thing. Middle Belt is saying the same thing. A chunk of Core North is saying the same thing. So it's not an evil thing. It's not a Southeast thing. That is very wrong. We need to change that impression. And let me put one thing on record. See, we do not want secession. That's the truth. But I can also assure you that Nigeria continuing this way, moving forward, you can be sure that not only the Southeast would want out, Biafra will not only become inevitable, even though the World Republic will become inevitable, restructure Nigeria, restore Nigeria to true federalism. Simple. And as regards IPOB, you see, the IPOP, I'm not sure those who really belong to IPOP up to up to one percent of the of the of NDIBO. I'm I'm not sure of that. I don't have the figures, but I know that over ninety percent of the Southeasterners are not members of IPOB. They may have sympathy for what they are doing, but not how they are doing it. Okay. I for one, listen, it's very important. I don't agree with the me the IPOB method. That's the truth. I don't want it. I don't want violence. And again, pinning the actions or activities of unknown gunmen on IPOB, I will not share it until I see hard facts that a unknown gunman is the same thing as IPOB or Eastern Security Network. Until that happens, I will retain my neutral position and take IPOB the way I see it as an agitation group that wants out, but I also know that they, they would stay in Nigeria if the country is restructured. Right, so me... if, uh, if Akim Baba thinks that uh, the Igbos who want to go, it's not true, but if going is, on, is imposed on the Igbos, to be honest with you, we will not regret going. Let me come to you, Mr. Idris. Um, recently, we saw a video um, where the Onion um, Sellers Association you know, spoke to the press. They had said that they do, I'd like to quote them directly, uh, that they want their people safely and securely taken or removed 
from the south. And of course, they're going to stop supplying onions. And they gave an ultimatum of sorts um, to um, the Nigerian state and of course, the leaders in the south. Um, many people had you know, received that news with different kinds of, um, you know, some people looked at it from a prism of these people are calling for a, some form of restructuring. But some other people are also saying that these people might be beating the drums of war. Yes, um, the, the, these people have a reason, the reason, their reasons, of course, we hear that their trucks have been um, stopped, um, the, the products on the trucks are destroyed, people are killed on their way to the south. But how are we supposed to perceive this move by uh, the people in the, the, the north, especially the um, onion sellers who have said that they want their people taken out of safely out of the south is this the best way to go about the situation should they be targeting um, the grievances at the south or should it be at the government mr idris can you hear me yeah uh, uh quite uh, thank, you, thank you very much i i have listened to doctor uh, uh i want to quickly say that uh I, I take exception to what he said regarding our revered and most respected Dr. Hakim Baba Hamad, one of the respected elders, northern elders in the north. Um, I think what he's talking about, uh, really, my thoughts are to what will really make people demand. So I don't understand what people want. It's so, it's so, it's so preposterous, you know. Sometimes I say it is cacophonic as to understand exactly what are those ideas are. Because if it's true of that, we all agree, saying that the North agree for the structuring. Of course, we have long agreed for the structuring. But the matter remains that how are you restructuring? What are you restructuring? What are the modus operandi for the restructuring? What are you putting for the structuring? Look at the way they know how to be going about it. Is that the way the Ibama want to go about it? Is that the kind of restructuring you want? Is that the kind of agitation you're talking about? Just recently, I saw the clip that um, Elite, uh, you know, was actually, you know, it went viral. Why he was saying that, yes, he believes in the initial war, but that he doesn't want another. I think, the, to the best of my knowledge, most of the very important Igbo, Igbo men that I know in the North, especially in Abuja, who are doing very meaningful you know, endeavors, they don't completely want any of people in this country. Conversely, if you look at, if you look at all these uh, in the Kalu of this uh, proscribed IPOP is doing in the East today, giving all kinds of instructions telling Igbos exactly what they should do to destabilize Nigeria. You can see what has been going on. They, 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 want, they want political... Do you, you think know, that... I'm, so, I'm sorry, Dr. I, uh, Mr. Idris. Do you think that Namdi Kanu has the powers to tell Igbos what to do? Because if you ask me, the Igbos are not under Namdi Kanu. Uh, they have governors. So, I mean, no, I'm, try, I'm no, trying to understand he, what you mean by that statement because I'm wondering... Do, you, yes, do the Igbos take you orders see, no, the thing is from that, a certain number of You see, the Igbos, the Igbos want a rallying figure. They want a rallying figure. And they have gotten in the person of Ndam Dukalu, which is very unfortunate. That is why, if you listen to the statement of uh, Dr. Hakim Baba Ahmed, what he was saying is that the entire Igbo race, I repeat, the entire Igbo race seem to support What's currently going on in the country? You can, you can look, look, look at what is happening now in the East, for instance. Apart from the INEC, you know, properties and police stations that are being destroyed, you can see that even food stuffs that are taken to Kibos, the onions, cows, and all of that, they burn them, burn the people. They begin to wonder what do they want. And conversely, back in the North here, we live peacefully, they are people. So this is embarrassing. If we begin to take a reactive actions now, then you, you said it's not a 
I just that wanna... is why our leaders have called us to keep on being peaceful. Alhamdulillah, we are still very much peaceful. We respect our elders. We are quite resilient and expect the next action. Okay. That is why when the president responded to the tweet that, uh, that, 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 that uh, Jack made uh, from Twitter Bay, you can see the viral reaction, people. Okay. And meanwhile, Trump has been very quiet. The president has been very quiet as to the kind of response to do to the, to the present uh, 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 the way a manner uh, the, the, the South is, is responding to all of this. All the government has been fired. Nobody is taking any decisive action as to as for us to have best in in, 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 the, in the Southeast. All right. Nobody, none of them. Or I, any important leader. Call name them. Nobody. Can I ask Even another the question like before I let um, Dr. Mefo respond to you because you spoke directly to him? Um, again, in, when you opened your statement, you no, no, you know, you know, Doctor was saying that he doesn't believe in violence. Sorry, no, briefly. No. Sorry, please. Doctor is saying that he does not believe in violence. If I understand what violence is, what the South East have done recently in that couple of months, how do you describe what they have been doing? Is that non-violent uh, 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 I'm, I'm sure he's going, to, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure he's going people? to respond to that. But I want to ask a question because I've, I've heard you say it again and again, the Igbos, and you keep referring to the Igbos uh, as the ones who... It seems more like they're the ones fueling Namdi Kanu, and you're saying they're looking for a rallying point, uh, a leader. When they have their, they have their leaders, they have governors, they have their, you know, just as you have spoken about Dr. Akimba, but they do have people they look up to. But then, of course, Dr. Mefo is going to respond to that. But my question is, when you say that in in the where when the where the Igbos are around you, they live in peace. Can you say that every Igbo person is responsible for what's happening in the southeast or for the burning or random burnings of trucks and trailers that are coming from the north? Because when people in the southwest, in the southeast and the south-south make reference to herdsmen as Fulanis, uh, the northerners say that we should take that out because it's not, the, those people don't represent every Fulani. So you're saying that uh, these people who are take, carrying out these violent and nefarious activities are Igbos. Is it fair to make that statement and lump all the Igbos under this group of um, you know, people who have taken it upon themselves to carry out these nefarious activities. Is it fair? Yeah, I think this is a good one. You see, you see it, it's because that they, they've been fired, actually. You can see what has been happening recently. That is why there's a general census as to they are the ones that are, that are causing all of that is the problem. And then if we have, if we have, if we have reacted, when I say we now, I'm talking of the North, if we have reacted to what has been happening for our own people now, the Northerners that are living there, their properties, their various business have been seriously attacked. They've been killed, they've been maimed, they've been rejected. I'm not talking of the Sudanese now, for instance. I'm talking of the core house families that are there, that are living peacefully there. Look at what has been happening. That is why I say, we will not take loss into our hands. Our leaders have taught us how to behave. That is why the average Igbo man in the North is living peacefully, unhindered. He does his business, he has no problem. You still Live haven't answered my question, Mr. Idris. Why do some bad things happen in the, in the South East? That's what we are saying. Okay. That is why we count them as being violent. Okay, because, I'm, I'm going to let Dr. Mefo respond to the questions that you asked earlier, but you still haven't answered my question. I'll, I'll bring it back again in the conversation. Dr. Mefo, are the Igbos violent people? Are the Igbos be, uh, beating the drums for war? Are they fanning the embers of war? Um, are they in total support of what the pocket, or the pocket of violence that have been happening, especially in Imo State? Is this what the Igbo people stand for? Because he's made an allegation that I'm hoping that you'd be able to clear. Hey, yeah, my friend um, raised uh, so many uh, posers, many of them surprising. He said he took exception for what I said uh, concerning the statement of um, Akim Baba. He's a respected uh, elder statesman, and uh, what I've done is to put his uh, statement in perspective and uh, to say that um, what should be done if uh, he really wants to resolve uh, the problem uh, moving forward. And um, 
I also said and I repeat that if Igbos are pushed out of Nigeria, we will have no choice other than going. And I assure us that Ndi Igbo will make a nation in a decade or two. That's the truth. You know, um, we are no violent people. Even the Biafra war, like I said, it was the federal government that fired the first shot. The war was fought in Igbo land, not in, the, not in any other place. It wasn't fought in the north. It wasn't fought in the west. It was fought in the old eastern region. And uh, why was it so? Because uh, General Yakubu Gowan declared then uh, what he called police action. And the first shot was fired uh, at Osoka. That was where Nzogu was killed. That was where uh, Tom Biga, the half-brother of uh, Ebeko Jubu, was killed. You know, so the, 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 the war was brought to Ndibo. So even if you use the Biafra war to measure it, it's a clear evidence that we're not violent people. And um, we submitted ourselves to all the peace processes, including the one brokered by General Lankra, the then head of state of Ghana, that yielded what is now popularly referred to as the Aburi Accord, which the Gowan administration refused to implement, which led to the declaration of Biafra, and the declaration of war by General Yakubu Gowa. Let's not call, uh, complicate this matter, it's as simple as that. Now, coming to what is going on in the Southeast, unknown gunmen, until they prove who the unknown gunmen are, I wouldn't uh, want to believe that the unknown gunmen is the same thing as Eastern Security Network. When Eastern Security Network was formed, I was made to understand, and I still want to believe that the real reason it was formed is to help in maintaining security in Igbo land. And I, I think it's noble enough. But if it is meant for armed struggle, if it is meant for attacking government and government institutions and agencies, Igbos will not be party to it. Not only me. Mainstream Igbos will not be party to it. And the leader and the spokesman of the Igbo nation, Professor Ambassador, George Obioso has already issued several statements to this effect, saying that we don't want violence. They, we do not support any violent action. But, but, Mr. Then, Idris, but Mr. Idris has alleged that no strong person in the East, uh, in the Southeast, has believe, been able I to speak against this. He's, me, he's, wait, wait he's minute, vehemently told, insisted just, that wait, wait, nobody wait in the Southeast has need, pushed back on the, the kind of insecurity that's coming point. from the Southeast. Listen, I need to make this point. I just told you that the spokesman of the Igbo nation, the President General of Ohanese, has spoken repeatedly against the violence in the Southeast, against the actions of the non government. What about the governors? What actions have no. been taken? We heard about the um, and we heard about the inauguration, but right after that, it, it seemed like it was dead on arrival because more and more things seem to be happening. Where are the voices of the governments? Where is the action? Where is the power that is supposed to, you know, come after the, these statements that the governments keep issuing? Dr. Mefo, can you hear me? <laughs> Now, let me also say that it is not easy for, um, for us to come out and speak against uh, unknown gunmen when we don't know who they are. But by the way, let me even ask, whose responsibility is it to track down and tell us who the unknown gunmen are? Is the job of the police, DSS, civil defense, and all the security it, it arms all their departments are in the southeast. Do you know that you can't hold any Igbo man responsible for not unraveling that? Because of all the over one dozen security departments in the southeast, none of them is headed by an Igbo man. So why are you blaming the Igbo for it? You know, let them do their work. When we know who they are, they will apportion blames and take necessary steps. Okay, let me also tell you that is no one step, one more statement. Look. When uh, Boko Haram started in the north, I am aware of one or two, perhaps three governors that took newspaper pages to recant their condemnation against Boko Haram. Did they not say much about them? 
then even now. So you see, it's not it's not a uh, the a matter of the South is not uh, speaking out or speaking up. We are speaking as much as we should. I am speaking. All right. Others are speaking. Our leaders are speaking, and um, it, we 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 cannot we we just can't speak without facts. Okay. If what they expect us to do is to blame uh, unknown gunmen on uh, IPOB or Eastern Security Network, I am sorry, we can't do that without facts. Back to you, uh, Mr. Idris. Uh, I, I want to make reference to something that um, Bishop Kuka had said um, some time ago. He, he said something like, um, we live in a country where you embrace terrorists and give them amnesty while you terrorize agitators. Of course, we know what he meant by that. Um, but let's look at Mr. President's reaction towards what's happened in the Southeast and the shoot on site, um, you know, order that he gave. Um, a lot of people also, again, you, you know, had all kinds of reactions um, that the president was um, coming down very hard on the North East, uh, the Southeast. But then uh, when it came to the bandage, um, we didn't see that same kind of action. Um, people even called the president genocidal. Again, remember the most recent is the president's tweet about, uh, on the day where the Igbos were celebrating or remembering the civil war that happened in 1967 to 1970. Um, so again, let, let's look at this situation. It's a very sensitive one, but how do you think Mr. President has handled generally in security across the regions of the country? And sh should people in these different regions have some form of apprehension to Mr. President's attitude towards handling the situation? I think these are all reactions. I, I, think, I think the present action uh, regarding uh, to the tweet is as a result of all the tension, you know, issues emanated from especially the South East. You can generalize anyway, things that we know. I know you are referring to the, the, the and blazing of terror. Hello? Go ahead. Go ahead. Quickly. We we're almost out of time. Uh, no, what, I, what I'm saying is that, what I'm saying is, like, like you know, doctor, I think there are 10 top, you know, issues that, that I need the president to respond the way, the, way, the way he is. We all know that the president is a very calculating and not abiding. We all know that. That is why we take the president's time. Because he, he responds to issues like one we just we just we just adding this uh, and all of that. But you see, my, my position is that what the doctor is saying is my imagination that uh, they are not violent and all of that. You see, if we look at that, we're able to address the Ibu not violent, not violent uh, in those sector. It will enable us to address or once and for all, and tidy up all of these issues. For instance, look at the clean of Gulag. Gulag, for it. There is no man that will come from the blue, following the way and present the electric clean of Gulag. For us to say, these are people are not responsible. Of course, like he said, we understand the police are doing their work. But this unknown government that is referring I don't know what you mean by unknown government. When we, we talk to that video, you know, people carrying guns all over the place, going naked on the streets of 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 of, of, well, Korea and all of Mr. That. Idris, we need to go. Unfortunately, I'm so sorry. We need to wrap up this conversation. Unfortunately, we have to go. But I thank you. I was hoping that we could conclude on this conversation and ask um, what the way forward is. But I want to thank you, Dr. Idris, uh, Mr. Idris, <laughs> Musa Idris, and of course uh, Mefor Law for being part of this conversation. Time is not on our side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all you right. for hosting me. Okay, well, we'll take a short break and when we return, we will discuss the cost of the 2023 election and the upcoming state elections. We'll be right back. Stay with us.